Well, we made some progress today. That makes Armin happy. It is getting dark out here. That's why the video is so grainy. So I let the ground get a little bit too high through that area there. So I just need to pull up the rail and scrape some dirt out and then put it back in and we'll be good to go. So who knows, maybe tomorrow we'll be done with skirting and we can get on to other parts of our story. So yesterday we actually had panels up all the way along there but it turns out that I have a hump runs from about there to about there where it's up a little bit too tall. So I'm gonna pull up the bottom railing there and get that rake down to the right height and then we'll get putting stuff up. We're just about done. I have a little bit of zip tie work to do along there just to make sure that those things stay where they belong. But otherwise, I think we're in good shape. Cheryl and I agree that we're not gonna bother trying to put any soil on top of this. It doesn't get a whole lot of sunlight back behind the trailer here, even in the summertime. It's in shade most of the day. So, we might just bring some moss down from up in our cedar grove back behind there and maybe some ferns and stuff they'll grow in this clay but that will be for a little bit later once i've got all the other landscaping and water drainage issues solved around the front half of this trailer this is where i was dragging some of the soil to these trees the roots were literally hanging out of the dirt there so just get a little bit more dirt back in here to control erosion a touch. Anyway, their forecasting is supposed to start raining severe storm weather tonight. It's supposed to start around 10.30 or 11 o'clock. So I'm going to guess that it will start raining in about 10 minutes because that's the way the forecasts work around here. But look at all of our pink red bud trees. They do enjoy them. They give such a wonderful burst of color in the spring letting us know that the green is coming. Anyway, time to go home. Just catching a turkey going over the hill up there. He's a big bird. He's just walking along the edge of the woods. Wind is blowing again today, so I'm sorry if it's in the microphone. But it definitely rained last night. 
a little bit of water standing right there that I need to, to fix that so it drains properly, but that won't be done today. I am really, really glad that we got the skirting done yesterday. Otherwise, we'd have to wait for another week or whatever before we can finish it off. <laughs> Ryan was brave and walked out to the garden. He got a little bit muddy from that. Today, Cheryl and I are going to spend some time inside the shop, get it cleaned up in there a little bit more and hopefully ready for boxes and such. I think most of our efforts is going to be in the back of the shop here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we get to it, lady? Yep. So it rained a couple days ago. We have a little puddle that's been forming here lately. That's pretty much dried up because the wind has been blowing. You might notice that in the microphone even. But uh, dried up enough that we can walk back here. And I wanted to show you how good this is draining now. You can actually see where water drained out that way. It looks like water is shedding quite well. I have just a tiny little bit of dirt to take out along here. But my wife decided it's time to set up our flower box. She really hates the tongue on this mobile home sticking out the way it does. Can't say as I blame her. So we went and filled the truck up with cinder block. I think there's more weight in there than when I was towing Ryan's camper back. Because the truck is kind of squatting down close to the ground. <laughs> but anyway... I have a little bit of landscaping to do here. I need to pull some dirt out from underneath the tongue and the front of the trailer to make it slope away better. This is now pulled away from the mobile home a little bit, dug down to about where I want it, so I'm going to use the box blade to pick up the rest. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm not paying you 10 bucks though, like I get the guy at the store. Oh. <laughs> you get my love and adoration. He doesn't get that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now that's his job to help. <laughs> Brian's like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your garden, Ryan. What's uh, going on in here? So up here I got some corns planted. You can see one of them there. Okay. But you can see this back line of corn's looking a little bit better than the front line is. Hopefully the front line will re-emerge because I planted them down a little bit, but we'll see. Over here is the farrow that was planted last year. Yeah, over the winter, right? Yeah. This was planted over the winter and you can see here there's a line of, well actually two lines of cilantro that are starting. Nice. So like oh, okay. Here. Nice. 
we got dead nettles here. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Here's that carrot that survived the winter. It's crazy. Yeah. There's another carrot here. I did plant some carrots and I did see a couple starting to come up. You can see that entire row there is all men. Probably end up taking over this entire garden at some point. Yeah. I'm completely fine with that. I love you. There's carrots spread all throughout here again. And there's some salsify. No shortage of wild onion. Yeah, that stuff is everywhere. I'm not exactly sure what type of grass this is. Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of plantain and dock and stuff that's taking over this year, which I'm completely fine with that. I'd prefer that as ground cover over these grasses and stuff. Oh, these are yellow peas. They've been doing really well, if you can't tell. <laughs> For as early as you planted those things, I'm amazed that they came up at all. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. These are um, crimson kale. Crimson kale. Yeah, yeah like or maybe it was scarlet yeah. kale. I think scarlet kale is the actual name. Starting about hmm. here, all the way that way, there's broccoli and garlic here. Oh, those overwintered as well, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. Tons of broccoli all the way down here. And then these are beets. Make my borscht. And I had a couple extra sunflowers, so I planted a couple extra sunflowers. Oh, on the outside of the fence. Yeah, nice. Cherry trees got leaves coming in. This is the beauty berry that I was concerned about, but okay. it's got some green. So raspberry, leaf dough, June berry, Showing some leaves. You mean the Saskatoon? Yeah. So it looks like everything is doing good. Let's check the blueberries actually. There's color in the stems. This one's starting to bud out. Yeah. See somebody nipped the tip off of that, but right beside it, there's a bud. Here's a bud. There's a couple buds over here. This is a ginkgo biloba tree, or maybe it used to be a ginkgo biloba. <laughs> Uh, give them some time. Yeah. I believe they're more of a warm weather tree, so. Yeah. Maybe in a month or so we'll see more life out of him. This blueberry still has some color in his stems. Yeah, and it's starting to bud a little bit. Oh, yeah. You can see a tiny little bud started there. This guy on the other hand. Woods. He's not looking so happy. Oh, look at that. The bark is coming off of him. He's got a bud, though. He's got a yeah. couple buds here, but this side's not looking too hot. Could be just the way that those blueberries are. It might be the type, because yeah. each one of them is a different type. Like, this one's a Duke. I'm pretty sure that one's Jersey. Like, there's an yeah. Elliot. Because apparently you need two different species of blueberries to get berries. Which That's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me. Like, how did they propagate to begin with if you need two different varieties of them? Yeah. That just goes to show how far, you know, our growing techniques have taken plants away from their natural growing okay. methods. Ryan's got a bunch of pots up there by his camper that are uh, have a variety of plants in them, too. Yeah, one of them a clipping from the peach tree that's out near the barn that I snatched a clipping off of. I noticed that his leaves have dried up, but they haven't fallen off yet, so that's interesting. A little peach tree, and it actually is the kind of peach tree that produces fruit. Yeah, so most stuff, I've noticed bigger things like trees and shrubs. When you transplant them, most of the time their leaves will either wilt or might even fall off before they recover. Yeah, that would be so cool if it takes. Because that means then we can take clippings off of that tree whenever we want and just plant another peach tree. Yeah. That'll be That'd cool. That'd be really cool if we can do the same thing with the uh, purple leaf cherry. What is this one? Nemico. Nemico cherry, yeah. He's really leafed out. Yeah. Well, and it's already gone through its flowering cycle, which is kind of interesting to me. I didn't even get any pictures of him flowering. I got like one picture of some blooms. Okay. You should share that with me and stick it in the video. Okay.